Hello and welcome. What real value does the International Criminal Court have in ensuring global justice? Does it have real teeth? It was established to be a court of last resort, but in the case of Sudan, critics are saying it's become counterproductive. When the International Criminal Court decided to issue an arrest warrant against a sitting president, Sudan's Omar al-Bashir, it set an historic precedent. On Wednesday, the court ruled that another charge could be added to Mr. Bashir's arrest warrant, one of genocide. The world opinion on this case has become polarized, with some hailing it as a signal that even governments and armed insurgents could be held accountable. Others argue the moves against President Bashir hurts any momentum towards a peaceful resolution to the Darfur issue, where more than 35,000 people have been killed, tens of thousands more have died from hunger and disease, and millions have been made homeless. Well, today we ask, will the ICC's pursuit of Sudan's leader in war crimes in Darfur strengthen the court or push it into obscurity? Remember, you can join our conversation with your questions and comments. Send us an SMS or an email, and we'll take your phone calls onto the show as well. Well, joining me is the leading face of the ICC, Luis Moreno Ocampo, a, an Argentinian lawyer who ele was elected to be the first chief prosecutor of the ICC in 2003. Great to have you here. Thank you very much. Of course, the, uh, the news is really this uh, uh, idea that Omar al-Bashir could now uh, have genocide uh, as charges against him. But it's been a year, almost exactly a year, since those first indictments, war crimes and crimes against humanity were issued. How much has really changed since then? The pen. The, the issue is that judicial proceedings are following. Bashir became a pushing president, had to choose where to go. The problem for me is that I, I don't see an improvement for the victims because it's not just the person who killed, it's the person who are in the camps. Our evidence show, our case is that what's happening in the camps today for 2.5 million people is for us genocide. The judges decided it's at least extermination. Now we'll see if we can add uh, the genocide charges. So mm -hmm. that is the urgency to help these people in the camps. Well, let me just tell you what uh, the response was from the Sudanese government to your efforts to get this genocide charge on the list. Mm -hmm. uh, Sudan's presidential media advisor, Rabia uh, Abdelati, had this to say. The ICC is only aiming at hindering the political and peace process of Sudan. Consequently, we don't care about it, so we will deal with it as we did with the arrest warrant when it was issued against Bashir the first time. So he's saying we don't care about it. How will adding genocide to the list actually make a difference, do you think? No, look, first my job is to collect the evidence, analyze legally what is this. I think for the victims, it's important that the victims understand what happened to them. And I think uh, the charges should be genocide. We'll see if we can impose this. But the arrest of President Bashir is not something I can do. Uh, in fact, the best idea for me will be the Sudan itself arrest Bashir. That will take time, but it will depend on how people react. So that's why. What you are doing here, discussing, is very important. Mm. How, how important is it for you that the international community follows through on making President Bashir accountable? How important is it for the credibility of the ICC? No, the interesting thing for me is they follow. South Africa informed officially to President Bashir when he was trying to go to the inauguration of President Zuma. South Africa officially informed him that if he was going to South Africa, he would be arrested. Mm -hmm. So the countries follow. It's not about they like or not like the law. So the countries follow. And Nigeria, Uganda, Venezuela, even Turkey did the same. So it's a process in which the law has an impact, and that's precisely what you have to understand. He, had to, he needed a lawyer. He, he, had to, he would face justice in, in the court. It's a tricky position for you because here you are, as you say, you're collecting evidence. But on the one hand, with, unless you can actually make some concrete uh, um, results, create something concrete out of it, um, people will say that basically it's, it's going nowhere. And this question we had at the beginning about people saying, well, uh, well A, are you overplaying your hand with the Bashir case? Is it, you know, you having to, are you overdoing it with that, do you think? No. I, first, the idea to do justice in Darfur was a decision of the Security Council. The UN Security Council decided the 15 countries agree. So I received, a, I received a request to do justice there. I'm doing my job. And what I am following the evidence. I will not hide the crime. So if I believe there is a genocide, I move my case on genocide. Then the other, the country had to arrest him. This is the process. You know, it will not be easy. But remember, in this country, in the US, when uh, Richard Nixon, after the Watergate case, he was re-elected, and then he fired the prosecutors. So take time and some battles, but at the end, they face justice. We'll look at the, uh, the US's unique uh, situation with the ICC in a, in a few minutes, but let me ask you to, to answer this email that came in from Kenya, from one of our viewers. Uh, Mohammed Abdurrahman Sheikh says, 
why why is the ICC's name not changed to African Criminal Court ACC apparently the court only issues arrest warrants for African leaders who committed crimes while the Western leaders are treated as if their gross human rights violations were no crimes uh, why is Ocampo not issuing an arrest warrant for Bush Blair or is Israeli leaders uh, some see it as as biased one way that it's uh, it's Western biased and and more targeting the softer. I had to do justice in the cases who are under <coughs> my treaty U.S. for instance never signed the treaty, so I cannot do U.S. But on the other side, remember when Rwanda happened, when the genocide in Rwanda happened, the complaint was why no one care, why you have a court for Yugoslavia and not a court for Rwanda. So yes, by President Bashir is African, but the victims are also African, are millions of victims from Africa. So in this case, you have to choose your side. I'm the prosecutor, I'm sort of the victims. There was an interesting email from uh, a viewer who sent it to our Facebook page. Barnabas Movhuti wrote in, and Barnabas uh, Movhuti says, the main players in the African Union are leaders who've committed atrocities in their own countries. Should al-Bashir be prosecuted, they're obviously afraid that they will be next. Therefore, they're simply protecting themselves by backing the Sudanese leader. And I wonder to what degree have you managed to send out a strong message that makes others say you might be accountable too, which is why sometimes you face resistance. You can also see that it's a success that some African leaders are afraid, but the problem is there are 30, 30 African countries, 30 African leaders committed with the idea, and they are pushing for this idea, and we are working with them. So we are working with African leaders to protect African victims. That's what we are doing. Uh, we'll get one more of your question in here, because we had quite a few writing in. This one from Facebook to Agu Ikena, who wrote in saying, Al-Bashir must be prosecuted for the mass killings in his country. If he's not called to order, that war will not end. And, and there are those, however, though, who are arguing that, you know, it's now time to look forward in Sudan and not backward, and that there should be what they call a political justice as a priority over criminal justice. Could you ever see justification for that approach? The problem is today there are 2.5 million victims in the camps, and, no one is, and at the same time there are negotiations. I'm not against negotiation. On the contrary, there is needed. But in, uh, in addition, Bashir should face justice. So both are needed, justice for Bashir and any criminal, and in addition, negotiation. And in fact, President Becky, as the chair of the African Union panel, say that's exactly what President Becky say. We need more justice in Sudan, not less justice in Sudan. We've got a caller on the line from London. Uh, Amin, what would you like to ask? Uh, my question is that uh, Mr. Bush and Blair, they go to Iraq's war and they break the uh, United Nations law. And there is two million Iraqis victims, so why they don't take a decision to be even George Bush, he, he apologized, and Tony Blair, so why they don't take them to the court? Why they take Omar Bashir? And what about Nuri okay. Maliki and all this, uh, I mean? Jafar, all of them, they they done all this crime okay. in Iraq. Let me, it's an interesting thing, I guess we should just for some of our viewers give a history. Uh, President Clinton did sign onto the, uh, the Rome Statute, but then uh, President Bush, George W. Bush, rescinded that signature. Now, is there any chance President Obama could re-sign onto that? I don't know. This is the U.S. decision, not my decision. Mm -hmm. The issue is neither Iraq nor the U.S. are members of the treaty, so I cannot right. investigate them. And eventually, if they are responsible for crimes, this does not diminish the responsibility of President Bashir. So I, am, I have different cases. We are prosecuting other people, but in this case, Yes, President Bashir had to face justice for the crimes he was committing and he is committing against his own people. Now what it is that I was getting at is that the U.S. has been very aggressive in trying to protect itself from the ICC uh, with the Hague Invasion Act, the American Services uh, Members Protection Act, um, which, uh, which actually is an interesting situation for you because, of course, if people are looking for this kind of accountability from America, as you say, you have no direct influence or power. But uh, um, Professor Francis Boyle of the University of Illinois uh, has, has tried to move on the rendition, uh, extraordinary rendition moves that the U.S. had. What, what authority, what, what can you do to at least look into those? No, this is a legal issue. Uh, to be involved in the crimes committed by U.S. has to be co crime committed in the territory of state parties. Mm -hmm. If not, I cannot intervene because I am not the world prosecutor. I am a prosecutor with a mandate coming from 110 state, not U.S., but if the U.S. soldiers commit a crime in one of the 110 states, yes, I can do it. You have an interesting uh, development now with uh, the Israelis and Palestinians. Uh, update me on that because, of course, you have uh, the Palestinian uh, National Authority's uh, minister saying uh, that they're willing to allow an investigation into what happened to Gaza and looking into that directly through the ICC. How does that change the, 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 the chess game that's going on there? No, I think it's very important in the sense that the Palestinian came to my office looking for justice, mm -hmm. and then the court became a place to look for justice in these difficult cases. There's a legal problem there, in the same way that Sudan say, 
I cannot investigate them because they are not members of the treaty, but I have a Security Council resolution. In the Palestinian case, I have no Security Council resolution. And the Palestinians say, we can provide to you jurisdiction. And that's the legal issue. Can they do it or not? That's what we are discussing. And they are coming to my office, providing more information. We are working with them to receive all their arguments before I make any decision. And what is the complication regarding whether or not Gaza can be investigated because uh, there is the dispute over whether or not it's an independent state? That's one of the points. That's one of the points they are trying to make. They are making a point. In we yes, that's one of the problems because the law says a state can accept jurisdiction. It's Palestinian state. And they are making an interesting argument. They say, it's not about we are state or not. It's about we have criminal jurisdiction there we can provide to you. So we are discussing this legal issue. What could be the consequences of, of the Palestinians being so forward in opening up their, their situation and saying, come, look, investigation, uh, investigators? What, what could be the, the potential outcome? No, I think what is important is to include a legal dimension in this conflict. Everyone has to understand, you, of course, there are many important discussions there, but the Crimes could not be committed. Crimes are not a solution. And in this sense, it's a progress in the discussion. Crimes could not be part of the solution. We have to stop the crimes and then have a real discussion about how to solve the problem. Let's take a question from Sophia. We're going to get to your answer after the break. But Sophia, what would you like to add to the debate? Uh, well, I would like to, uh, is, uh, the issue I would like to ask uh, is, is this, uh, the, the, the Gaza uh, problem, the Israeli government keeps them in a camp. What's the difference between uh, here, the issue of uh, because Omar al-Bashir is keeping people in isolation or in a camp mm -hmm. for maybe a year or so, and, and Gaza is ex exactly the same situation. Okay. So therefore, why doesn't this court do something about Israel? S Sophia, we're going to get onto that in a moment when we get back. We have to take a very short break, but more with our uh, discussions with the prosecutor in just a moment. <laughs> 